We've been addressing grace on this ongoing series, and man often wants to manage, he wants to control, he even wants to execute all elements of his life. And they're even sometimes trying to manipulate or arm twist God into giving us what we think we deserve, what we think we need. The grace, as we have covered, is a gift of God, something we are, are given no matter what we're doing most of the time. Worrying and striving does not have to happen to gain God's favor. He is your good, good father and wants to give you what is needed. Jesus addressed this when he was talking about worry and he compared us to the birds of the air and the flowers of the fields where they don't do anything. They just go about their business and and they look great, they're well fed, their their storerooms are stocked up and, and God gives them what they need. And are we any different? Sure, we're, any, we're much different. We're creating God's image. All those things I just mentioned with birds and flowers are provided, believe it or not, for you. Seeking wisdom merely for our own benefit or our own intellectual exercise misses the point. My name is Pastor Jim Wallace and I'm on staff at Crossroads International Church in South Alabama, Massachusetts. And I want to remind you that grace and, and as way as a way of wisdom as I'm talking about today is something that is given to you liberally generously and James captured this and his his uh, primary focus is is basically in prayerfully engaging with the Word of God itself and allowing the Holy Spirit to be the only the only thing that's between you and what you need I don't deny that you shouldn't tell God what you need. It's a blessing to shut out all the other voices, including our own, and tune into God's voice alone, who's speaking through, like this, the pen of our brother James. And by the way, James was the brother of Jesus. James wrote this, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask, who gives generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, without doubting, for no one, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea and is driven and tossed by the wind. The person must not suppose that it will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all ways. Who is wise understanding, mind you? By this good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I know you want a harvest, a harvest of grace. I know you want it sown in peace in your life. I seek that so much. And if we look back at this section, you'll see this is what James wants to understand that wisdom produces good conduct, meekness, purity, peace, gentleness, reasonableness, there we go, mercy, good fruits, impartiality, sincerity, and righteousness. These are two far afield of the fruit of the Spirit, are they now? And consider how relational most of these words are. Some uses of the word wisdom in the Old Testament apply doing things with skill. It seems a big part of what wisdom has captured by James involves skillfully and righteously relating to other people. That takes a lot of grace, folks. Seeking wisdom merely for our own benefit, as I said earlier, is an intellectual exercise that misses the point. The heart of wisdom outlined here speaks to other issues and doing rather than just hearing the word of God and putting hands and feet to your faith by loving others in deed and truth. You want grace, folks? Put your hands and feet into practice by faith, by loving others. You bet I need God's wisdom and I need grace for these things, and I know you do. Seems to me that at the end of the letter of James, we ought to circle back around to the beginning. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God, and he will give us generously and without reproach. I'll see you next week when we talk more about grace. Have a great evening.